Hello, my name is Nick Huntington Klein, and we are continuing on with my series of videos related to my book, The Effect. So uh, in this next chunk of videos, we're going to be talking about causal diagrams. So we've been talking about identification, the idea that we have some sort of uh, research question that we want to answer, and we want to use data to answer that question, and we need to make sure that the calculation that we do on the data lines up to answer the question that we are interested in. And we talked about the data generating process as being one important way of thinking about what data we see and the different reasons why we see the data that we see so that we can dig out the explanation and the actual research question that we want. And uh, how can we do that? How can we map out the data generating process in a way that makes it understandable uh, and that we can use to help identify our research question of interest? That brings us to causal diagrams. Causal diagrams are a, pro a, a way of writing down a data generating process developed uh, by Judea Pearl. And uh, what it really does is it says, hey, we are going to write down the data generating process uh, in a very simple and straightforward way and that will allow us to identify uh, an effect once we have an understanding of what the data generating process is. So before we get down to actually writing a causal diagram out, which we'll do in the next video, I want to think about what exactly does it mean for one variable to cause another? Because that's what we're going to be doing in these causal diagrams is writing down lists of variables and talking about how one variable causes another. And many of the research questions that we have are also going to be related to how one variable causes another. So what does that mean? What does it mean for one thing to cause another? Now, of course, the definition of causality varies from field to field and uh, depending on what exactly it is that you're studying, right? If you're a physicist watching this, you're going to very much disagree with what I say about causality because you're going to talk about a different thing than I'm talking about. But in the realm of causal inference, when you're working with statistical data and you're trying to infer some sort of causal relationship, uh, what causality can be thought of, a good way to think about causality is this, is in terms of intervention. If you could reach in and you could change the value of a variable, it would change the probability distribution of a different variable as a result of your intervention. So this is not the same thing as a conditional distribution, two variables being related to each other, right? So uh, for example, you know, we talked about a conditional distribution, the conditional uh, uh, average proportion of uh, people who are women is much higher among people whose names are Susan than they are among people whose names are Chris, right? That is a conditional relationship. However, if I talked to somebody named Susan and I convinced that person to change their name to, I don't know, Denise, it would not change their probability of being a man or woman, right? Me changing their name does not cause the distribution of gender to shift, right? It just changes their name. So even though these two variables are related to each other, there is a conditional relationship between one and the other, it is not a causal relationship. By reaching in and changing the value of one variable, we did not change the distribution of another. And that is what it means in this context for one thing to cause another. Uh, if you can reach in, make that intervention, make that change, you will see the conditional distribution of another ch variable change as a result. So a, big, a very big example that we've already done before, right? We had this example with a pen before where I had the pen up here and then I dropped it and went down there. Uh, there is a causal relationship there, right? We can we see two variables in the data, whether my hand is open or closed and whether the pen is up there or down there. If I intervene and choose to open my hand, it will change the distribution of where the pen is. The pen will go from up there to down there, right? Opening my hand caused the pen to drop. At least it was one of the causal factors. Now some important things to distinguish here. One, just because one variable causes another does not mean that it is the only cause of that variable. There could be many causes going on there. So when I opened my hand and the pen dropped, right, it wasn't just the fact that my hand opened that caused the pen to drop. It was also the fact that there was nothing under here to stop the pen from falling. The fact that uh, the earth is under there causing the pen to be pulled down towards it. Lots of different factors caused the pen to drop. And that does not mean that my hand was not a part of that. My hand was a partial cause of the pen dropping. And so we would say that the pen, my, me opening my hand, caused the pen to drop. It was a cause of the pen dropping. That's part of our definition of causality. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, we are only looking at changing the distribution of a variable, right? It doesn't necessarily need to always happen. So if you are, for example, for a lawyer, if you're a lawyer and you're thinking about causality, uh, in your case, when you're thinking about causality, you're thinking about things that actually happen. Uh, so for example, if I uh, have a, a wet spot in front of my store uh, and you walk past it and you think, man, somebody really could slip on that wet spot, right? Uh, but nobody does slip on that wet spot. Well, you can't really sue me because nothing actually happened, right? There's no actual event there that I could have caused. But from a statistician's point of view, from a causal inference point of view, me having a wet spot in front of my floor 
increased the probability that there would be somebody who slipped. And therefore, I would be a cause of somebody slipping, even if nobody actually did. The key here is that by changing a variable, by making a wet spot in front of my store, uh, I have changed the distribution of the variable people falling in front of my store. That's all there needs to be for there to be a causal relationship. Me changing this variable, making the floor wet, changes the distribution of another, increases the probability that somebody will fall, even if nobody actually did. Uh, and this is important, right? When we're thinking about these sort of complex social structures, you know, imagine, for example, we want to know, uh, we, going back to an example we used before, what's the effect of getting more education on your performance in the labor market on your earnings? Uh, and so let's say that we take somebody and we say, okay, uh, we're going to give this person an education they wouldn't have had. Otherwise, maybe we're going to give them a big old scholarship to go to college, right? And they wouldn't have been able to go without it, but because we gave them the scholarship, they can go. Okay, great. Uh, and then let's say that that person uh, doesn't use it at all. They go to college, they get the degree, and then they just go do exactly the same thing that they would have done before, right? In that case, nothing actually changed, but the fact that we sent them to college probably changed the distribution of the different occupations that they could have had. Even though they didn't choose to then go become a lawyer uh, or something like that, uh, they still increased the probability that they could have become a lawyer, and therefore sending them to college changed, it caused their occupation, even if they ended up in the same place they would have, right? That's the key here. You change a variable, it changes the distribution of another. This also means that we would still say something causes something else even if it didn't work. A much simpler example than the college one is the lamp, right? You have a light switch and you turn the light switch on, that obviously causes the light to go on. But that doesn't always work. What if the light is burned out or the lamp is not plugged in? I can turn the, I can turn the switch, we would see that the lamp would not go on, but still in that case, we'd still say that generally turning light switches on causes lamps to go on. It changes the distribution, even if it does not change the actual literal outcome that we see. One way to make sense of this is to think about the words that we might use to describe causal or non-causal relationships. If I have two variables, X and Y, and I wanna say that those two variables are related to each other, but I don't wanna imply that one of them causes the other, there's a bunch of stuff that I could say. I could say that these two variables are associated. I could say that they're correlated. I could say that they're related. They tend to occur together. They tend not to occur together. They go together whatever that tends to be, right? So there's a lot of different words that I can use, and, and those sort of imply that these two variables are related. Seeing one changes the conditional distribution of the other, but changing one, reaching in and intervening in one would not change the distribution of another. However, if I want to say that one that the, these two variables have a causal relationship, that one of them causes the other, I can say something like X causes Y, X affects Y. What is the effect of X on Y? Does X increase or decrease Y? Does X change Y? Does X lead to Y? Does it determine Y? There's lots of different terms that we can use like this. And sort of the distinction that you can see here is that there's a directionality to the ones that are causal, right? I had to say X first. I couldn't say Y causes X and X causes Y. Those aren't the same thing. Those are different statements. But saying that X is related to Y and Y is related to X, that's non-direction, right? There's a distinction there between one of the variables having a cause on the other. It changes the distribution of that variable or not. Uh, now, of course, there are some words that sort of imply a direction, uh, even if we're not necessarily saying causality, right? You could say that uh, uh, X is linked to Y, right? You might say that X is followed by Y, it has ramifications for Y. These aren't technically saying anything causal, but they sort of want you to think that there's some sort of direction there uh, that uh, maybe they want to put a causal idea in your head, even if they can't actually show it. But that directionality is one of the distinctions between something, a relationship that is causal in a relationship that is not causal, at least in the way that we think. All right, so that's a basic rundown of what we mean when we say that there is a causal relationship between two variables. And that's the kind of relation th thing that we wanna keep in mind. It's the kind of definition that we wanna keep in mind uh, when we are thinking about how to draw out causal diagrams that represent the causal relationships between the different variables that we are interested in. Because again, that's what we're gonna need to put down in our data generating process, put down in our causal diagram to be able to make any sort of sense of it. All right. That's it, thank you.